I think we all know that money is at the core of this Wall Street movement. Money is the lubricant that greases the wheels of our economy. When there's enough money, our economy moves along smoothly. When we, have, we don't have enough money in our system, the economy starts to grind to a halt. People become unemployed, businesses fail. So money is also power. Who controls money has tremendous power over our economy. Question is, where does money come from in our economy? Who gets the control of it? And why does it sometimes disappear, leaving people unemployed, leaving, leaving businesses to collapse? That's the big question we have to answer. So most people think about money. You think about cash in your pocket. You think about the dollar bills. There's about 800, 800 billion dollar bills out there, 800 billion in currency and notes. That's a tiny fraction of our total money, total money in circulation. Where, where does most money come from? It's bizarre as it seems, banks in this country have the power to create money, to spend money into existence. When I went the, to the bank to get a $100,000 mortgage, they did not loan me money that somebody else had deposited. They wrote a check on money that did not previously exist. They gave me that money. I go out and I spend that money, and until I pay that money back, that money circulates in the economy. You add together all the loans, all the debt, everything people have borrowed from banks, that is the money that circulates in our economy. There's currently about $50 trillion in debt in the U.S. economy, if you add together the public and the private sector. That's the money that drives our economy. So we have a system in which money is debt. Our, our economic system is built on money is debt. When that debt disappears, there is no longer money circulating to drive our economy. When the banks are loaning money into existence faster than they're collecting repayments on loans, the supply of money increases. That allows the economy to grow. When the banks, however, start to collect money faster than they're making new loans, the amount of money in the economy is decreasing, and that threatens to grind our economy to a halt. So why is this problematic? What's the problem with this system? Well, in the first case, there's inherent instability built in. When the economy is booming, businesses want to borrow money, speculators want to borrow money, consumers want to borrow money, banks willingly lend them this money hand over fist. This stimulates more speculation. This stimulates the economy, pushes it into an overdrive where the speculation exceeds the capacity of the economy to actually create goods and services. Inevitably, the bubbles created must collapse. In the time of collapse, banks are terrified. They don't want to make new loans. They start to collect loans much, much faster than they make new ones. The source of money dries up. This exacerbates the economic crash following the bubble. And so we have a system that is built on exacerbating booms and crashes, exactly the opposite of what we want. Another big problem with this what happens when I borrowed that $100,000 from the bank at 5.5% interest over 30 years, I have to pay back well over $200,000. The bank has the right to create that money and loan it to me. I have to pay them back more than twice what I borrowed. The interest rate on that five or $50 trillion, I'm assuming it's at least $2.5 trillion a year being transferred to the financial sector. This explains why the financial sector in my lifetime has gone from 2% of GNP to 8%, quadrupled in size the resources captured by the financial sector, a systematic redistribution of wealth and resources to the financial sector. The third problem is this, that our economy ordered, the, the bank loaned me $100,000. I have to pay back over $200,000. They loaned me the capital, but not the interest. For me to get hold of that interest to repay the bank, we need continual new loans flushing into our economy. We need economic growth that brings forth new loans. We have this mandate for continuous economic growth. If we fail to have economic growth, then the economy starts to shrink. Banks destroy money faster than it's created. This leads to job loss and unemployment. It becomes impossible for me to pay back more than I borrowed because not enough money is there and we have misery. So our current system places between these two impossible outcomes, un unsustainable, endless economic growth or unacceptable misery and hardship. It's simply not a, viable, not a viable monetary system. So what do we do about this? What are our options? Well, what we have to look at is we have to recapture the benefits of money creation and the power inherent to money creation. It says in our Constitution 
that Congress has the right to coin money. Uh, this has been a, a basic principle that we do have the right to create money. Abraham Lincoln, when fi uh, faced with financing the Civil War, had the choice of borrowing money at 29% interest from the banks or printing and spending into existence the money needed to fight the Civil War. He chose the latter. He chose to do the Civil War without permanently indebting us. We have the same options right now. In fact, if we took away the right of the banks to create money, or at least part of that right in the short run, more and more as we go, they're currently sitting on $1.6 trillion in excess reserves, money they could loan and they're not. They're not using the rights we gave them. So what do we do? How would this work where society recaptures the right to money creation? There's two basic paths. First, the government can loan money into existence like the banks do. The government could loan money directly to our states facing fiscal crises, to our municipalities, to our towns and cities like Burlington. Those cities and towns and states could then spend that money to hire people, to fix our infrastructure, to create the jobs and improvements our nation so desperately needs, to hire teachers and firemen and police officers. The government could also loan money directly to key critical business sectors, to the food systems we so desperately need, to the alternative energy we so desperately need, that our private sector is not adequately investing in any way. Another option is simply to spend the money into existence. The government can print money and spend it. Last year, the Obama administration printed out $1.6 trillion in government bonds. We have to pay those back with interest. We have to pay back far more than we spent. An alternative would simply have been to print $1.6 trillion in non-interest-bearing U.S. currency and use that for the same purposes. It does not further in debt our children. It does not create a, a debt that we have to pay back in the future. Um, we can, and we can spend that money on those activities we desperately need, on the public goods that the private sector refuses to provide. This is our constitutional right, explicitly in our Constitution. So I'm not arguing that we can have some kind of free lunch, that we can just spend money with no hardships. We live on a finite planet. We have to respect those limits. But we can spend that money now and tax it back later. We spend the money and at the same time create the future tax revenue used to pay it back. It's like banks loan money and are repaid money, destroying it. The government would spend money, then tax the money later. Rather than tax, and, tax borrow, and spend, we would move to a system of spend and then tax. And there is, this, is a, this is not a radical idea. The same thing goes when we loan money to our states and municipalities. They would have to collect that money in tax revenue and repay. The point is, though, if we borrow money at interest, we have to collect higher taxes in the future. If we spend that money into existence with no interest, that lowers our overall tax burden. That lowers the flow of resources going to the already wealthy. That keeps more money in the hands of the people today. So we, the people, create the value and the benefits of, um, of our monetary system. We should capture the returns. Uh, we could have a debt-free bailout. There's a lot of good ideas on how we could do this. Um, I, I just actually to include, I should say we should spend this money we have. We have to create an economy that focuses on the real problems, on misery, poverty, unemployment. Th that's what a recession really is, not a lack of economic growth. We have to create a shared prosperity on a finite planet and design an economic system capable of doing that. And I was going to say earlier that there are a lot of other alternative ways to get control of our currency, put it more in local hands, and that's the topic of our next presenter, Gwen Hallsmith.